Hey guys, it's Omer from Immos.com, the quick first impressions gameplay video for Survive By, a free to play 2D bullet hell roguelite MMO developed by Human Head Studios and published by Digital Extremes. I spent a 5 10 minutes running around checking this game out. Make some comments if you guys do want to play uh, Survive By or just learn more about it. Do check the review on Immos.com on the link below. Let's go ahead and start it right now. I do want to say right away, this game is right from the get go, very action packed. There's not a lot of storytelling or other nonsense. It's one of those games, you could, it's a no nonsense game. You jump right in and you can start killing things right away in fast paced action. This is consider a bullet hell game because things do move rather quickly once you're uh, in higher level areas. The beginning areas are fairly easy, but once you're out of the beginning zones, you get tons of different enemies attacking you all at once with tons of different projectiles. And if you're looking at this game and you're thinking Realm of the Mad God, uh, yes, it clearly is very much like Realm of the Mad God, both visually and gameplay-wise to a degree, because uh, the game is only three playable classes at the beginning. I'm playing an archery character, and you can unlock additional classes upon reaching level 25, and I'm sure they'll add more classes in the future. Three starting classes right now, and three more unlockable classes. But uh, the game is a permadeath MMO as well, meaning that once you're dead, you are gone forever. However, unlike Realm of the Mad God, there's actually a reason to die in this game. In fact, the game says death is only the beginning, and it actually makes a lot of sense because your next character is essentially survive. Your next character is survived. You know, you're survived by your next character, and what you accomplish on your first character gets essentially passed along to your next character in a, in a currency called valor. Basically, we're level 10 right now, and if we were to die as a level 10 character, we'd get a certain amount of valor. We have 342 right now, so if we were to die right now, we get 342 valor, and we can use that valor to up upgrade our legacy. Legacies. So we talked to our bard in town. You can see what legacies we have right now. I actually have nothing equipped right now, but you can see all my legacies I have in my possession. I have these four legacies. So chain reaction, when killing an enemy, uh, they explode and does damage. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy. We can equip this one. And we can equip one more over here. Let's go take this one for now. Let's go ahead and equip uh, whatever four we have right now. It doesn't really matter. Let's go ahead and grab this one as well. And let's get one more. These are my four current Valors in the game. Rather, four uh, legacies. There's only four of them right now. You can actually acquire new ones. We're going to confirm our purchase. So we're using our Bloodstones, one of the many, one of the few currencies in the game. You get those by doing quests in the game, though that's not a premium currency. If we talk to this board over here, we can get more. Like, we kill Fury. If we get 20 kills, we can get more Bloodstones. So those are the things I equip right now. Those are my legacies. They're basically all level 1 or 2. And upon dying, I can use my currencies, my 342 Valor, to essentially upgrade my existing legacies. So dying is a key part of the game. So I can teleport to a more difficult area, and I'm going to kill some more enemies over here, too. And it is a large, persistent world. Other players are in this, you know, the same world as you. And it's very much like Realm of the Mad God. But unlike Realm of the Mad God, dying is not so detrimental. I mean, it's not good to die early on. You basically want to get to level 25 and then die after that. Because the higher level you are, and the better gear you have, dying is more advantageous at that point. Because when you die at a higher level, you get more Valor. And Valor can be used to both upgrade your existing legacies... So when I kill an enemy, they'll explode and launch some projectiles, which you just start right there. So, the, you know, I only have four different legacies right now. You can equip four at once as well. But you can actually unlock new uh, new legacies as well. And you can get new legacies if you're almost like a gotcha system in the game. You can roll for them. I think it costs like 2,000 Valor or something to roll for basic ones. And if you want to guarantee a rare one, you got to spend like 10,000 Valor. So you do have to spend, uh, you do get, there's a lot of RNG involved in what Valors you unlock. But it kind of makes it fun as well because you know you don't know what you're getting, and they can constantly add new val. New I keep calling them val. Yeah, I keep calling them um the, the legacies, the things your, your actual passives are called legacies, the things you upgrade are called legacies. Kind of mix up relics sometimes. Relics are just things you consume in game. You kill bosses, they drop relics, you consume them to give you some perma stat buffs. And when you die, depending on how many relics you consume as well, you get more valor. It's a little, it sounds a little complicated, but it's actually rather simple and actually pretty brilliant in game design because, you know, there's so many different. You know, you can spend your valor points on so many different things whether you want to upgrade your existing legacies or just try getting new ones. There's a lot you can do. So it's actually a really neat system. In fact, upon reaching level 25, you can actually enter something called the well in the game, which is like almost like the final dungeon. When you're in the well, essentially you're, you're pretty much guaranteed to die because you can no longer leave the well. You just basically sit there killing wraiths, higher level enemies that pro get progressively stronger and smaller, stronger, and every time you kill one, you basically get a uh, guaranteed valor. It's a great way to farm valor before you die, and then you go ahead and make your new character. And you can make your new character a, a different class than your current one, it gives you a kind of chance to play with all of the game's classes, and it's actually a really neat system. There's actually nothing quite like this, actually. Now, one small complaint I have right away is that um, the combat doesn't seem very visceral. Like, you can see when you kill an enemy, they do blow up, which is kind of cool. And they're only blowing up because of my, my uh, legacy that I equipped over there. I'm sure you get other legacies, which make things way cooler. But beyond your left click, which shoots an arrow, I have a right click ability as well, which consumes energy. I can target a bunch of enemies. There's not very many enemies to target over here right now, but you'll see when I target more later on. New quest. Let's go grab this right now. Basically, if you kill an enemy and they drop a scroll on the ground, it was basically a, a procedure-generated quest. You just go kill a certain, you know, tougher enemy for the quest. So it's not very complicated. And almost all the dungeons of the game are procedurally generated as well, just random. 
and doing dungeons gives you better loot. You're killing bosses and stuff. There's raids as well for you know, higher level stuff. So we had to kill this guy for a... Oof, we ate the big bullet over there. So we kill these guys. So if I target a bunch of enemies, I can shoot my arrows and like right click. So I only have left and right click, so skill wise, there's not a lot you can do. I mean, the core combat is very basic, and it can definitely be a little bit grindy, but there is a purpose to all of it. The grinding can be a bit repetitive, but you know that, you know, as you die, as you get, rather, as you gain levels, you gain gear, everything you work towards essentially gives you more valor, and it gives you a fun way to get, you know, new, basically new abilities. Not necessarily new skills, but like, again, when I kill this enemy, it's gonna pop into four different things. Got a random health buff over there. And it's really neat. There's no other game really does progression quite like that. I mean, Realm of the Mad Guy was really fun as well, but when you died, you were done in that game. So this kind of takes that concept and makes death a key part of the progression. I mean, you will die in this game a lot, and you're supposed to die. Dying is merely a form of progression. So even if you die a little earlier than you want to, it's not like you, you, you're, you're losing out on anything, really. Because death always gives you more and more better progression. Though, again, you do want to die way later on than early on. The world itself is rather large as well. You can see if I zoom out over here. You can actually teleport to... Uh, certain waypoints you get in the game you unlock. So I have a waypoint in the desert right now, which is where I'm at right now. You have to unlock those waypoints almost like you unlock waypoints in Diablo. You have to actually move there manually, and then you activate them, and after that you can always teleport between the waypoints you've currently unlocked in town and whatnot. You can buy uh, other goodies in town, like weapons and stuff too, but... Where the game I think is lacking again is just the combat itself doesn't feel as visceral as I would like, but the progression is definitely interesting. The game is in early access as of this video, but there is so much potential with what they can do with it. It just, right now, there's, it doesn't feel like there's enough, but the way, you know, you can unlock new legacies, the, the rarer the legacy, obviously, the better it is, and the more interesting it can be. I want to see more legacies that actually, um, like, killing enemies blows them up. That's one legacy that I think is really cool, right? But, like, there's other legacies that just increase stats, and just doing a little more damage and stuff, or taking a little bit less damage, I don't think it's very interesting, versus actually things that you can see viscerally on the screen. Stuff like that, I think, is awesome. Just killing that enemy and making them do more damage is really cool. So you can use your all that valor on other upgrading existing legacies or trying to get new ones. But it's weird because some people have called the game a bit pay to win. Even though you don't have to spend any money to enjoy the game, you can actually unlock legacies straight up by buying them. Which gives people that are willing to pay a bit of an advantage. Well, obviously quite a big, quite a big advantage. But again, none of that is really necessary. And as of now, I don't think it's any PvP in the game anyway. You can't be PK'd by higher level players or people with tons of legacies and stuff. So it's not really a big deal. You don't have to spend any money to enjoy the game. There's actually like almost no appearance customization either. And for an MRPG, that's kind of lame. But I'm sure they can add that, you know, I guess hats and stuff that you can unlock. You can see if I click my character, I gotta bust up my character screen over here. I, you know, you have a weapon, you have a necklace, you got a ring. There aren't that many, you know, pieces of gear you can change. And the gear you change doesn't really, you know, change your appearance too much either. So appearance customization is weak. And uh, just having left and right click does feel kind of weak as well. But I'm sure they'll do a lot more with it. It's, it's a really interesting concept for a game. And there's some really cool, almost like community elements in the game too, which I think are really fun. So if certain players kill like certain bosses in the game, everybody in the game gets a buff. I'll actually show you that in the main menu in a second right now. So let's get out. Oh, we gotta get to a safe spot first. And one thing I've noticed too, there's almost no safe spots in the game. If you're in the wild, there are bullets coming at you from everywhere. And it's very easy to die if you're not paying attention. Very easy. So you do want to dodge those bullets. So if you, you can find uh, resting safe spots basically in uh, the teleporters. Outside of teleporters, it's basically very dangerous everywhere. There are bullets coming at, you, coming at you from every which direction. So let's go into this spot right here, and from here, we should be pretty safe. These are basically the only safe spots in the wilderness where these teleporters are. Let's get to the main menu real quick. Let me show you that. And actually, in the game, there's earthquakes per periodically happen as well. And earthquakes, are, they, they just shake the screen basically. And the higher level character is, the bigger earthquake it has in the game when they die, which is kind of cool. So when there's a giant earthquake in the game, you know a very high level character died. So it's kind of cool. Just You can see what other people are doing just by earthquakes and stuff in the game. So you can see play over here. Let me show you. Uh, where is this? Influence. You can see the influence menu over here. This guy's been killed 109 times, the greater Mirage Hunter. And when you've killed him enough, you know, essentially everyone in the game gets an experience bonus. And this guy's only been killed 21 times. So if certain bosses are killed many times, they actually get bosses on the entire server for everyone. There's a lot of really cool MO elements in the game as well. And there's crafting and a lot of other little details as well. But the premise of the game is definitely interesting. And it takes the concept of the Realm of the Mad God and I think expands on it quite a bit. Though it's still, there still doesn't feel like there's enough to do. But... It's interesting, and I think uh, Survive By can do really well in the future. But if you like what you see, I do recommend giving it a try. It's free to play on Steam. Anyway, guys, uh, if you want to learn more about it or play it yourself, do check out the review on Amos.com on the link below. Anyway, guys, later.